a very good morning a to very one good all morning to one all present here i am happy to introduce I'm the happy first to speaker, introduce speaker, today. First speaker today dr ferdin joe dr ferdin john, john joseph john joseph he is currently an assistant professor currently an assistant professor of the faculty of the faculty of information technology in tai nichi institute of technology bangkok he graduated his bachelor's and master's degree in computer science and engineering from anna university chennai during the year 2009 and 2011 respectively he got his phd in computer science and information systems from the national institute of development administration bangkok during the year 2015 his area of research includes deep learning iot and blockchain technology he has nearly a decade experience in teaching he has published in peer reviewed international conferences and journals he is certified cloud associate with alibaba cloud i now invite dr ferdin to take over this session over to you sir uh, so if any of you are watching this uh, presentation from a public place or if you are with some other people i would uh, request you to kindly wear a mask while you attend this uh, session um, because of the soaring numbers of uh, covid positives i would like to see you all safe and sound okay so i was given a, a good enough uh, introduction so i don't need to introduce about myself so i have this uh, certification from alibaba cloud uh, very recently so uh, i will be giving uh, a link for you to register for this uh, exam uh, by the end of this presentation so there is an exam on the 3rd of june so today it's 28th so if you are able to spend like some 5 to 6 hours for watching all the lectures Uh, from the preparation materials given in that exam kit you will be able to take that exam and if you are able to pass then you can get a certificate like this it's quite valuable and even it's good for industry perspective and yeah the the worth of this certification is like if you go normally it cost like around 120 us dollars but normally this is given to evangelists for free of charge so you can utilize this opportunity to get this certification so for today i am going to explain about uh, an introduction a uh, brief introduction about uh, cloud computing and then i will go into alibaba clouds global infrastructure and then we will see about uh, alibaba's cloud products and then finally i will go on to the link for the certification exam so let's get started with that uh, with the introduction to cloud computing uh, well uh when we see about the definition of cloud uh, it it has been defined by the national institute of standards and technology in us it's like a a premier organization which gives uh, standards and protocols for various technologies today uh, cloud computing is a model for enabling uh, convenient on demand network access to a shared pool of uh, compute uh, configurable computing resources Uh, it can be anything like a networks or servers or storage applications and services that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction this cloud model promotes availability and is composed of five essential characteristics three service models and uh, four deployment models so uh, normally when you think about uh, cloud Uh, people say some kind of architectures and all those things but every day we are using a cloud based system the the thing which we are using this google meet is a cloud based system and uh, google docs which you are using like a google uh, spreadsheet or anything of that sort any softwares which you are using with the google's website it is all hosted in the cloud so then there are uh, some kind of uh, data science based uh, websites like uh, kaggle where you can get a lot of data sets and where you can have some kind of uh, uh, jupyter notebooks and even google colab they all work with this uh, cloud so it's uh, quite a cool technology like uh, there are five disruptive technologies right now uh, 
uh, one is data science and then as iot then blockchain and then this cloud computing and then ai so among all these uh, cloud is having uh, the gaining a uh, prominence and you can see today the richest man in the planet uh, has got a fortune from this technology jeff bezos is the one who have been doing with the uh, amazon web services but today i'm going to explain about uh, alibaba cloud so in in our opinion uh, cloud computing uh, has certain kind of paradigms we call as the central ideas and the properties and characteristics and then the techniques enabling and uh, enabled by the cloud computing in the central ideas we have the utility computing and then we have service oriented architecture this has been quite been for a long period of time like even before uh, 2010 this has been like it, this has been emerging actually like uh, this is like what we call as a web service uh, we can have like a web widget and you can share the resources between the web servers which are available and that has been um, laying a foundation for this kind of cloud based systems and then we have the service level agreement and then in the properties and characteristics we have high scalability and elasticity availability and reliability manageability and interoperability accessibility and portability performance and optimization and uh, this has been enabled using hardware virtualization uh, you might be uh, having uh, or you might had already some session on virtualization i don't know whether you know of this or not some tools like virtualbox vmware are available where you can actually uh, make your own virtualized system like you can create as many number of machines within your own system so that is within your computer but when you have uh, a requirement that you need to have a lot number of servers within a period of time you are not having much physical infrastructure then you need to go for this uh, kind of cloud based virtualization and then we have this parallelized and uh, distributed computing and then we have web service so when we see about the properties and characteristics uh, firstly we see about the scalability and elasticity it gives about the dynamic provision and multi tenant design and then we have the property of availability and reliability this deals with the fault tolerance system resilience and system security performance optimization is the next one which deals with the parallel processing load balancing and job scheduling accessibility and portability which has the uniform access and thin client and then we have the manageability and interoperability which has the to deal with the control automation system monitoring and billing system so this is mostly with all, which encapsulates all the features or all the properties and characteristics of uh, cloud computing uh, this includes both the service oriented architecture and the service level agreement which i mentioned over here the cent central ideas so this one it, it, it all included it, it comes under this utility computing but it, it includes this uh, uh, service oriented architecture and the service level agreement so all these together form the essence of cloud computing and then it provides these five paradigms of properties now let's see in each and everything uh, now we see about this uh, scalability and elasticity scalability is a metric which is normally uh, measured uh, to see like how many users can pull into a database system uh, i think most of you are working for affiliated institutions with anna university that's the first case i would like to explain uh, uh, you might be aware like uh, the anna university results like since i studied in the same anna university i still have the experience uh, when they pro uh, publish the results uh, the the first few hours after publishing of the results you will not be able to access their uh, results database that's because there will be around uh, uh, 100000 to 200000 students accessing the website at the same point of time but the web server will have a certain amount of users only to be able to pull into that particular database so in that case those who are uh, accessing at the first few microseconds will be able to get into the database and other service will be forbidden so this is the issue of scalability 
when you increase the server's capability the number of uh, users who can pull into that database will increase that will substantially increase the scalability of the system okay so then uh, we have this uh, uh, feature of increasing the number of servers then it is possible to increase the number of uh, users because you can have copies of these databases in various number of servers and then we can redirect the people from one server to another when the availability of that server is not available so that is one case and the second case is the IRCTC website for the reservation of uh, trains i don't know how that system is working because i am not in india for the past 10 years uh, in those days i still remember there is a system called tatkal where you uh, kind of uh, uh, have a system to uh, re reserve the uh, rail tickets uh, you will have to perfectly clock in by around 8 to 8 30 and then uh, we uh, you, you can you can book the flight uh, train tickets for the next uh, one uh, next day or something like that so that's the aspect of uh, that call uh, so for that particular limited number of seats and the limited server um, uh, limit a lot many people all over the country will access the same data, uh, database and the same server so then that time the system hangs and you will not be able to uh, access the database in a proper way so that is also an aspect so with the advent of this cloud computing we combine the virtualization system into the server so what we do we create virtual instances or the virtual servers inside the cloud and then we uh, increase the number of servers at that particular point where it is needed and then we will delete those when it is not needed because these additional servers are needed only at a specific point of time so that, that's the reason why we have a, an increased scalability and elasticity when it comes to cloud computing and then we have availability so when we have like a, a, a cloud-based system uh, for the servers it will have a, a, an availability of 99.999 percent and the degree to which the system or subsystem is uh, specified operable and the committable state and uh, this is not known at uh, a, any particular time and the reliability actually uh, deals with the quality of the servers or the the server disk running and if you have uh, uh, read about the old raid disk reliability you would much understand about it so it shows like how the disks can be made available at that right point of time and uh, uh, we can re reduce the errors so that future is what we call as a fault tolerance and then we have the system resilience and system security so this uh, has to be you know, built to achieve this availability and reliability and then fault tolerance is like uh, uh, it's a property that enables the system to um, make the system work properly and to reduce the number of failures and uh, uh, the basic characteristics include uh, you don't need to have a single point of failure and the fault detection is done and then after the fault is detected it is then isolated from the whole system uh, so the failing component is identified and then the fault containment is done to prevent the propagation of the failure so one server is having some kind of uh, a failure and if it is combined with the other servers then the, the the network traffic may get affected so we uh, change this uh, disk from this particular uh, server to the isolated base so you can uh, avoid the uh, fault to occur again so this increases the availability of data using the reversion modes now we see about the parallel processing parallel processing is like we can for one big task or for dealing with a big data we need to have this kind of parallel processing um, if any of you have a laptop or a desktop using uh, a gpu or like a nvidia graphics card or like a, a amd athlon's uh, amd graphics card or whatever it is so that does the parallel processing and when you use this nvidia graphics card it uh, uses like uh, 
uh, in uh, nvidia cuda toolkit that uh, that is the one which is responsible for the parallel processing so that's what available with the uh, network uh, systems with your local uh, laptop or uh, computer but when you are having a huge server you need to have kind of uh, parallel processing to simultaneously um, store all the whole data and to read the whole database within a short span of time so when you use a cloud computing system and you have multiple servers then you can distribute the work between the servers and then you can get the things done in a very little amount of time so that's what we call as a parallel processing so the calculations are carried out simultaneously and operating that the large problems can be divided into smaller ones which are uh, then solved so there are different levels of parallelism we call it as bit level parallelism instruction level parallelism data level parallelism and task level parallelism so we have a lot of benefits from the cloud using the for the market and enterprises it reduces the initial investment and reduces the capital expenditure so the that's what i mentioned like when you uh, are uh, starting a company and you want to have a huge server base to store a huge amount of database so when you go for a cloud the cost uh, which actually uh, you need to invest for the uh, cloud based server is much lesser when it compares to you go and buy for a rack server or a blade server whatever it is so this reduces your initial investment once you have a, a huge uh, revenue and you have a, a good amount of money to invest on your data centers then you can go for out of the cloud you can have your own dedicated data centers so until then you can better rely on the uh, cloud based systems this improves the industrial specialization and to improve the resource utilization for the end user and individuals we reduce the local computing power and we reduce the local storage power and then uh, a lot of thin clients devices in daily life can be used uh, there are a lot of examples of those and here i present the hype cycle of gartner gartner is one website where uh, they provide the hype cycle or the trend of how these uh, technologies are going to um, um, excel in the next few years so actually the raw cloud computing you can see here it is going to have like uh, around uh, less than two years of scope the white dots are like less than two years but what exactly we can see is the products of the cloud like the serverless infrastructure or like the container management or like the uh, edge servers or like this uh, cloud third tethered compute or like deep neural network assets or quantum computing these are like the hot topics which uh, rather than the, having the cloud you can have these uh, in depth technologies in cloud uh, i'm just uh, asking you to just transform your thoughts from just the normal cloud computing to these uh, kind of uh, in depth technologies in cloud we call it as cloud native uh, so those technologies are having a hype actually now we have a lot of cloud providers available online uh, amazon web service and then we have microsoft azure google cloud ibm cloud and alibaba cloud so these are the top five uh, cloud providers and they are like uh, uh, their market shares are also given almost 50 percentage of the uh, market is being occupied by amazon web service and uh, microsoft azure and alibaba cloud is having a uh, five percentage of share equaling with ibm cloud alibaba cloud is actually uh, growing faster nowadays and it is having a huge scope uh, in uh, in the area of cloud computing and they are having a lot of amazing uh, features and amazing products where you can do a lot of even you can do your research which uh, with these kind of uh, products which are available with alibaba cloud so there are a lot of cool features and that's what we are going to see with the alibaba clouds uh, global infrastructure so when it comes to alibaba cloud uh, alibaba cloud is founded in the year uh, 2009 uh, by its uh, founder jack ma uh, jack ma is like the the richest person in china and uh, 
they started uh, building it in Beijing and then slowly they moved to Amzu and uh, Silicon Valley in US. Um, so they started to uh, have their first data center in 2010 and then in 2014 they started their data centers in Beijing, Shenzhen and uh, Hong Kong and then Alibaba announced uh, as an uh, official cloud services and infrastructure partner for the Olympic Games at the World Economic Forum, uh, Forum in Davos in the year 2017. That is, the Olympic Games, which are scheduled to be conducted last year, which has been postponed to this year, and again it is getting postponed. It, has, it is supposed to be conducted in Tokyo. Uh, so that Olympics uh, cloud services and infrastructure uh, is provided by Alibaba Cloud. And in the year 2018, they are included in the magic quadrant of uh, Gartner. So that shows the trend of Alibaba Cloud. So from 2018 onwards, it has been a, comp uh, a strong competitor against this uh, Amazon Web Service and uh, other big ones. There are a lot of Chi other Chinese uh, cloud providers like Huawei and then uh, uh, many others, like many other cloud uh, providers are available. Oracle has one and then a lot. When comparing all those, Alibaba is having a strong foundation and a strong uh, share value in China. And now it is uh, competing with the uh, heavyweights all over the world. Now this is the Alibaba cloud trend uh, from the year 2019 to 2021. In the year 2019, you can see Alibaba cloud was just started as a, a challenger. It has not even gone to the niche players. Firstly, it goes to the challenges and then it goes to the niche players. Sorry, firstly, it goes to the uh, niche players. Uh, sorry, uh, the challenges and then the niche players. And then it goes to the visionaries and then finally it lands at the uh, leaders. So uh, before it, it, it was not even into the uh, niche players. It was started with the challenges level and then it had a huge uh, gallop and it has gone reach to the level of visionaries in the year 2021. So if you see the, the marking of Alibaba Cloud and the Amazon Web Services, it's looking quite huge. But uh, with this development within this two years time, Alibaba Cloud has a huge uh, a promising future. Actually, uh, you cannot limit Alibaba's product or Alibaba Cloud within just China. It has been growing from all over the world. And now I have a video for you to watch. Uh, so this video is for around uh, four to five minutes. So this is how Alibaba has transformed a coffee chain called uh, Kopi Kenangan in Indonesia. So let's watch this video. Kopi Kenangan, we have grown from a small standalone coffee shop with a grab and go concept to over 400 stores across Indonesia today. We have this one cup, one customer mentality. As our business continues to grow, we realize that we need a solution that can allow Kopi Kenangan to differentiate itself and bring the best of our brick and mortar cafe experience online. That is why Alibaba Cloud came to mind because we needed to digitalize and go faster. This includes consolidating online transaction and processing data for intelligence to help streamline operations. Since the government regulation mandate that we need a local data center, Alibaba Cloud definitely is the cloud solution that has a strong local data center with expertise in Indonesia. With Alibaba Cloud, we are moving up the stack to focus on delivering more value to our customers. Our journey with Alibaba Cloud, starting in January 2020, where we launched our new retail management system covering end-to-end -end process, from online to offline, and also from pickup and delivery. With a scalable and reliable cloud infrastructure from Alibaba Cloud, we can now provide seamless and agile customer experience, even during our peak hours. Serving time has been reduced to a maximum 30 minutes. Now, our customer can enjoy their coffee without waiting for long queue in the store. During Armanas, our third year anniversary in August 2020, 
our order have increased 20 fold and we hit the peak of 1800 transaction per second however processing time and app function were not affected at all we are even able to reduce waiting time for the customer we are able to scale up resource according to the traffic volume that time and operate more efficiently. This is all thanks to the support of Alibaba Cloud Container for Kubernetes. The cost saving and the agility we have gained from ACK and microservice architecture are valuable as we continue to operate during COVID-19 and also in the future. We can now speed up our order processing time and handle large database transactions with little or no replication lag. This is achieved with Alibaba Cloud SolarDB, which runs at six times the speed of standard MySQL database. In this challenging time, making smart decisions and managing data efficiently is very crucial. That is when data warehouse fit in perfectly. We built our data warehouse on Alibaba Cloud Analytic DB for PostgreSQL and DataWorks. The data warehouse has become our main source of information for report generation, for analysis, presentation and also our dashboard so far we have been impressed by alibaba cloud's agility and flexibility not only they provide great real-time support which is very fast they also up to date on the technological innovation that cater the requirement for indonesian market in fact some of their product and feature were launched to suit our specific needs so far our focus has always been on offline to online migration we hope to eventually look at how intelligence and data can further boost efficiency customer experience and product quality we also plan to explore digital assistance ai chatbots and conversational commerce in the near future customer really value shopping as an experience but not just as a transaction it's not only about speed and convenience the whole point is making technology does not feel like technology. We believe that Alibaba Cloud can be the reliable partner for us to reach that goal in the future. Since coffee is not just about science, it's about personal connection too. Our partnership with Alibaba has been nothing but great technology and great innovation along with that important human touch. We want to keep working together hand in hand towards that goal in the medium and long term future. So that's a case uh, study with the Kopi Kanagan in New uh, Indonesia. So they have used this uh, Alibaba cloud services for uh, leveraging a better business even in the time of pandemic. And uh, now we see about the Alibaba cloud's uh, portfolio. So the, the reason why I kept that uh, video is that you need to know how Alibaba cloud has been transforming the businesses even out of China. Uh, and the servers, you don't need to necessarily use the uh, data centers in China itself. So there are a lot of services uh, available all over the world. And the availability of your data will be available uh, in various data centers so that can be replicated as well. So in, in terms of Alibaba's cloud portfolio, we have the core internet technology where we have the middleware, which has the MQTT, the IoT-based systems. It has a web. And then in the video and traffic, we have video on demand, Apsara Live Video, uh, CDN, that means uh, content delivery network. Uh, most of your Facebook videos or uh, images are stored in this kind of uh, storage services. Uh, so CDN is also available with Alibaba Cloud as well. And then we have like uh, AI-based systems for smart city, industrial brain, uh, aviation brain, ag agriculture brain, and in IoT, we have a lot of these three uh, platforms and then we have application services and then in the middle tier we have the data intelligence where we have the relational data systems for mysql mysql um, uh, server postgres sql and then for mariadb mongodb and most of the database systems are all supported using this alibaba cloud and then most importantly we have this big data and ai we have the various products like dataworks max compute emap produce uh, data hub and some of these products we will be uh, even with this pie, we will be discussing a little bit from the next lecture, which I'm going to have. Uh, so this is with the big data and AI. And in the security, we have like the uh, security standards to deal with the WAF attack, uh, like uh, anti-DDoS, or the di distributed denial of service. Uh, the, it gives like a server security and business security. And in the cloud infrastructure, we have a lot of products available. 
firstly in elastic compute we have ecs or the elastic compute service then we have auto scaling and then we have reserved instance using the container service uh, for kubernetes there is a new technology which has been a hot topic among the it professional today that is what we call as the devops it comes under the cloud native technology that is the one which is responsible for the usage of uh, container service for the kubernetes and then we have this elastic container instance using the container registry we have this innovation compute uh, using the bare metal instance and gpu instance and the fpga instance this is for using the deep learning based uh, systems and then for storage we have the object storage service and then block storage and uh, file storage and then we have this uh, cloud storage gateway and hybrid backup recovery and then finally we have a uh, table store storage systems and network we have the virtual private cloud that is the most important thing in alibaba cloud and then we have other cloud enterprise network and then uh, nat gateway server load balancer that is for uh, monitoring the traffic of the network uh, among the ecs instances and we will see all, uh, some of these products uh, well in detail then we have some features for private cloud as well so this is the uh, wholesome uh, explanation on the uh, alibaba cloud portfolio so if you see this uh, elastic compute service that is the first product which we are going to see that in short we call this as ecs so this has a single instance availability of 97 9.975 percentage and the multi zone instances availability up to 99.995 percentage and it is available in 22 regions all over the world and it can boost up to 3.2 gigahertz in the clock speed and then it can create up to 100 instances in 10 minutes that is you can create 100 virtual machines this creation of one virtual machine in the cloud is what we call as the elastic compute so uh, this cloud computing service will increase the number of virtual machines and even you can create that kind of machines within 10 minutes as well for 100 instances so if you are having a uh, ecs instance if that has a uh, a keyword of G6 uh, to start with uh, the URL, then it is used for general purpose. It is used for the small and medium sized databases, data processing, and backend applications. And the compute optimized instances are used for web servers. Uh, it, it uses the C6 uh, codec, and then um, it, use, it is used for uh, even for gaming as well. Uh, for gaming, uh, if you are going for a very high-fi gaming, then I won't recommend this uh, server. Uh, but uh, you, you can better go for the other one, which I will tell you. Uh, in memory optimized instances, which has R6, it is used for uh, data mining and analysis. And for high clock speed, uh, we have the HFC6, HFG6, and C4. It is used for high performance front-end applications and uh, high performance scientific computing. And for local disk, we have uh, I, uh, L1 and L2. So they are used for the relational database systems, NoSQL data warehouse, and uh, Hadoop even. Uh, in, for big data instances, we use D1, NE, and D1. They are used for MapReduce product and distributed file systems and data processing. And for SAP, we use this SE1NE instance code. So these are the various uh, codes which we use for the elastic compute or the ECS instances. And uh, for uh, payment or the, the cost for using this elastic compute service, if your server is, uh, ECS instances are working uh, for a long period of time, then you can go for a subscription based. But if you, are, if you need it for only for the usage you need to do, then you can go for this PayG, that is pay as you go model. So you, you can use that aspect also to pay. So there is a flexibility in the usage of uh, data resources. And now we have the innovation in elastic computing. We see like uh, various different types of uh, high capacity uh, ECS instances. We use this uh, GPU instances uh, with GN6V, GN5, GN5i, and GA1. They are used for deep learning based applications for processing the video, for instance, if you want to use the uh, deep learning based applications on the surveillance applications, then you can go for this. And then you can use for visualization 
and then go for scientific computing. And we have the computer optimized instances using F FPGA. Uh, they use the instances of F1 and F3. They are normally used for genome research. Uh, genome research, one gene's data will cost you like around, uh, around a ter terabyte amount of data. Uh, so uh, to process that kind of data, we need to have like a high capacity parallel processing systems. So then we use this one. Then we use for video encoding and decoding, image transcoding and financial uh, analysis. So when we use this uh, cloud native or Kubernetes on bare metal, there is a 20 percentage increase in, uh, in the performance when it com uh, comes to the traditional physical server or the cloud server. Uh, and then we can go for the high performance uh, computing for the supercomputing clusters. So you, they use this SCC and the Elastic High Performance Clusters EHPC for the uh, supercomputing and the high performance websites front end. Now I am going to discuss uh, about a few Alibaba Cloud products. So this, this is the architecture of uh, various. Uh, Alibaba cloud products we have firstly we have the CDN that is the content delivery network which is normally used for storing on demand videos and images like in a bulk like a huge uh, aspect of like around the terabytes or even petabytes of data can be stored and it can be efficiently taken from this content uh, delivery network and then we have this anti ddos ip which is used to uh, check for any denial of service attack on the cloud system and that will automatically remove the nodes which are affected by the anti ddos uh, sorry ddos and then it will provide the uh, solutions automatically then it is uh, good for uh, manipulating the waf attack as well and then we have this uh, internet and intranet server load balancer so then we have the ecs instances which are created so you can see like as many number of virtual uh, missions uh, or uh, can be created using this ECS instances. They all are supported using the virtual private cloud and they are even connected through these uh, uh, other two products, uh, OSS and RDS. So today in this lecture, I am going to discuss about the ECS and then the server load balancing and then this RDS and uh, OSS and then with uh, another product which is available, we call as uh, Auto scaling. So these are the products we are going to uh, discuss uh, quite in detail. So before going into that, we need to know about uh, various types of services. So this on-premises means uh, some kind of infrastructure which are provided like with the traditional servers, uh, traditional building-based system, uh, traditional uh, server blocks, and all those things. Then we have the like infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service so here in, in uh, on premises everything is managed by the user or the developer but uh, in the case of infrastructure as a service we have the operating system middleware runtime and data and application these are managed by the uh, user when it comes to platform as a service only the application and data are managed by the user but when it comes to software as a service which is the um, aspect which is done in most of the products of alibaba cloud so everything is done by the cloud provider itself so the job of the user has been reduced to a maximal extent using this software as a service so in today's exploration we are going to see about elastic compute service or ecs and then we will see about the server load balancing or SLB. And then we see about auto scaling and object storage service OSS. Firstly, we will discuss about the Elastic Compute Service. The Elastic Compute Service is a computing service with a flexible processing capacity compared to physical servers. ECS can easily deploy and manage applications with better stability and security. So the main aspects of uh, Alibaba Cloud's ECS is to provide security and thereby it becomes stable and then it automates most of the process of the user and thereby it provides elasticity that is uh, other way, uh, in other way it is called as uh, scalability and then it is uh, for a high performance uh, network. 
So here we can see the traditional uh, ECS concepts with the infrastructure as a service as, a, and, uh, as well as the cloud. So this operation and maintenance without the cloud, everything has been used by the user itself. But when you have the ECS instance with the infrastructure as a service, we have the applications, data, runtime, middleware, and operating system. These are managed by the users, but they don't. They just can ignore this virtualization, creating the virtual machines and the servers and the storage and networking. These can be ignored by the users because it is automated by the uh, service provider. And in the virtualization, we have the data centers, and they, these data centers will have the server racks and the server racks will provide the virtualization. The virtualization aspect will have the Zen and the kernel virtual machine or KVM. And uh, on top of this uh, KVM or the Zen machines, we have the elastic compute. Actually, the distributed file system uh, in Alibaba Cloud uh, is what we call as a Pangu. And uh, the job scheduling as a Fusey. Uh, so this uh, um, distributed file system rests on top of the Linux cluster, which is in the uh, data center. And the distributed file system uh, have forms as a base for the products like ECS, RDS, OSS, Table Store, and Max Compute. And then we have like the cluster-based system uh, management as well. And this shows the uh, various data centers which of Alibaba Cloud, which are available all over the world. So they have like uh, 22 regions, and in 22 regions, they have 66 zones. Uh, like uh, a region is where the Alibaba Cloud will uh, launch the instances that you create, and uh, you choose a region to optimize the latency, and you minimize the cost or address the regulatory requirements, and you have the uh, regions available in the west and the east coast of US. It is available in UK and Germany in Europe. And in the Middle East, we have one data center uh, region in UAE. And in India, we have one in Mumbai. And then in Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia. So these are the regions available in the Southeast Asian countries. And then uh, apart from China, we have one each in Japan and Hong Kong. And in China mainland, we have a lot of. Uh, uh, regions like around uh, uh, seven regions are available in China mainland itself. So this has been growing continuously and it is expected to uh, grow more because Ch uh, Alibaba Cloud may even grow, grow into the um, Africa's and other countries which are not explored so far. So with just this limited number of regions with the Alibaba Cloud, they are holding uh, around a five percentage of the market. Uh, so you can see here at the bottom, like you can see the region, then we select like China, Hong Kong. Uh, and in the zone, we can select whether we, we want to have the zone B or the zone C of one. So that's that's what we can select uh, a particular region or we can set to select a, a random region. The zones are physical data centers with the independent power grids and network within a particular region. And within the... Uh, uh, region we have multiple zones and the fault isolation can be performed between the uh, zones so if one zone is going wrong so you can get the data which has been backed up in another zone as well so each region contains multiple zones that's what i mentioned earlier so you create resources in multiple zones and it gives high availability and high re disaster recovery and you create resources in the same zone it lowers the network latency uh, when you uh, when you use the ECS instances in the regions and as well as in the zones, uh, how does it cost? Like in case if you are uh, contacting a zone within the region, then it it is something like an intranet. So that doesn't cost anything; it is totally free. But when you uh, uh, go from one zone in a region to a zone in another region, then it is crossing through the vpn gateway and it goes through the internet so that that cost so here in this case we have the singapore zone a and singapore zone b so to connect between these two uh, zones it, it doesn't cost anything but when it comes to 
connecting singapore so zone a with the beijing zone a so then in that case it goes through the internet and that costs and the easiest instances is a virtual computing environment including it includes a separate cpu memory storage and other functional components required for a uh, normal um, mod, uh, operating system so they have like a different types of ecs instances burstable type t6 general type g6 memory type r6 and compute optimized type c6 ecs provides a wide selection of instance families and types optimized to fit different use cases instances type comprise varying combinations of cpu memory storage and networking capacity the instances of uh, ecs in alibaba cloud uh, has been given uh, and it has been divided into multiple families so here you can see like ecs dot and then the next two uh, characters will say like what kind of instance family they belong to they belong to t6 or v6 r6 or c6 so here it is g6 so it's an instance family of general type so then what is that six in the g6 it is the generation number which generation it belongs to that instance belongs to the sixth generation and the instance type we have the 3x large xxx large and we have like different uh, large also small also so many other uh, uh, instance families available so if, if it is a t6 or a six uh, instance it is used for small websites or web applications and it is used for development of test environments for testing purpose you can use it and this is actually a cpu based computing with the basic instance family and the remaining all belongs to the cpu based computing at the enterprise instance families g6 g5 G ic5 and c5 uh, or uh, are having a enterprise instance family uh, while g6 and g5 uh, is for general purpose and it is for high performance front end uh, web servers batch processing distributed analytics and then it is used for high performance science and engineering applications and even for gaming and video encoding ic5 and c5 are used for small and mid-sized databases uh, it's for data processing tasks and it is used in many enterprise applications so the enterprise instance families for big data applications are used in D2S and D1NE for map reduced jobs of Hadoop, Hive, and HPace, Spark in memory computing and MLib, Elasticsearch and log analysis. Enterprise instance families for high memory applications are done using the instances of R5 and 6, RE6, a high performance database. It is used for data mining and analysis, catch service, in memory database. And enterprise apps and in, in the enterprise instance families uh, for uh, input output intensive applications we have i2 i2g and i2ne and i2gne they are used for oltp and then for high performance relational database they are used for the nosql databases like uh, cassandra db and mongodb and even you, you can use it for elastic search and for high clock speed applications for supercomputing, we use the instance family of H. Uh, they are used for a high frequency general purpose HFG6 and a high frequency memory intensity HFR6. And they are uh, good for applications requiring a high clock speed, uh, used for automated trading and some uh, even some gaming applications as well. So here we have the heterogeneous computing, which includes uh, GPU or FPGA. So previously we saw about the CPU based computing. Now we see about the GPU based computing. We have the instance families of uh, VGN6i, GN6i, GN6P and GN6E. So they, used, they are used for real time online rendering of cloud gaming of org, and also used for augmented reality and virtual reality. They are even used for deep and machine learning and uh, even use uh, gn6i is used for uh, machine learning rendering of uh, videos or like any kind of graphics uh, and they are used for gpu accelerated databases gn6p is used for deep learning voice recognition and other ai applications scientific computing computational finance and only this f3 is used with uh, uh, fpga 
they are used for, for deep learning financial analysis genomics real time video processing other tasks requiring special purpose hardware and then used for photo transcoding so now we see about the ecs instance billing model we have the pay as you go uh, pay for a compute uh, like per second usage or like uh, how much time you have you have been using that uh, ecs instance it will bill once you delete that instance the billing will stop automatically subscription is like uh, uh, it gives a, a discount of around 85 percentage when it compa uh, compares to the pay as you go model so you have to decide which model whether you want to have pay as you go that gives a better cost or some for some business pay as you go holds good and for some business a subscription model holds good so you need to decide like what kind of uh, payment model which you need to choose whether you want to have a pay as you go or to have a subscription so then uh, they are available for monthly as well as for yearly this is actually suited for those with a stable long term resource usage and for preemptible instance we have the price of preemptible instance varies depending on supply and demand preemptible instances are offered at a lower price compared with the standard page instances uh, alibaba cloud will release your preemptible instances if your bid is lower than the current preemptible instance cost so that's all about uh, the ecs or the elastic compute service now we go on with the server load balancer uh, this is like uh, you can uh, imagine this the system of uh, anna university results so in anna university results uh, normally when you access the databases you can uh, ac uh, easily access the server but when you have more number of people then that server may not be able to uh, give access to every user clocking into the database so we create multiple ecs instances for multiple number of users so then there will be like a sharing of resources from various uh, servers so in that case people can easily access multiple instances and then they can get more scalability and elasticity that's why we use this server load balancer so we use this tool of server load balancer to identify which server has to be given access to that particular user we will even give some weightage like it uses the scheduling algorithms which we normally learn in the concepts of operating systems like it goes like with the uh, round robin and other kind of algorithms to decide which instance has to be given more weightage like if it is like 80 percentage is given to the first ecs instance then uh, 10 8 out of 10 instances will go to that particular instance and the other instances will get the remaining two likewise you can change if you set that particular ecs instance weight to some other particular value then it will uh, act accordingly a server load balancer is actually a traffic distribution control service that distributes the incoming traffic among multiple ecs uh, instances actually like uh, for anna university results uh, we can set like the result is going to be published on a particular day and after that uh, uh, after publishing of results within the first one hour in that particular day or the first few hours for that particular day you can activate this uh, server load balancer instance and then you can increase the number of ecs instances which you are needed and then you can it will automatically uh, create the virtual instances uh, or the ecs instances and then it will provide a high availability scalability and it even reduces the cost and it also defends up against uh, the distributed denial of service attacks up to 5 gigabyte per second and the server load balancing architecture it, it has uh, at the level of layer 4 as well as in the layer 7 layer 7 is actually for the presentation layer and the osa architecture of network and uh, it, it is used for the http and https traffic uh, it, it crosses through the tcp and udp traffic and uh, in the la uh, layer 4 it deals with the uh, in internal network which goes with the tcp and udp protocol and uh, uh, in layer 4 it supports uh, the client connection bound to the server connection and there is no need for modifying the header so this is how the load for uh, layer 4 load balancing looks like 
and in the layer 7 we support the http and https protocols and it is uh, its connection is terminated at the load balancer and pulled to the server the headers may be modified and uh, the x forwarded for headers contains the client's ip address so it is at the application layer itself so it is easy to manage the server load balancer instances will contain listeners and these listeners will go to the backend server and uh, the listeners will decide which backend server it has to connect with so the so server load balancer instances uh, are running uh, load balancing service that receives and distributes the incoming traffic to the backend server so a listener inside the uh, load balancer will wait for the client request and forward the request to the backend servers it also performs a health checks actually like we have like some number of backend servers and it this listener will check whether they are healthy enough whether they are able to uh, give the response properly or not so that's why we use this uh, server load balancer listeners to uh, detect the unhealthy nodes and remove them out and the backend servers will provide uh, instance to process the distributed risk requests and the cost optimization for server load balancer also have been like uh, pay as you go in the case of uh, public network um, but in the case of private network you can use the uh, uh, SLB for free so this is uh, used only within the private network environment so if you are using from one region to another region then you need to go for pay as you go and there is no subscription model for this particular case now we are moving to the next tool of uh, auto scaling auto scaling is when uh, the for example i will give the same example of online university website like uh, the university provides the results and then we manage that using the server load balancer during that time but there might be some time when there will be a rumor saying that the result is published and the people will be continuously clocking into the website but anna university won't be aware that they the news has leaked that this has happened or they, they they may not be aware of it so in that case we need to give automatically we need to increase the instances so for that we create this auto scaling instance and even for this ircTUC website also in case at an unfortunate time when more number of people needs to travel by train then they will go on to this ircTUC website and uh, at a time which is not marked by the server load balancer then in that case we use this auto scaling this auto scaling is a kind of a free product mostly it is used for video streaming and gaming applications uh, this is for the unpredictable traffic but the server load balancer it is used for predictable traffic and the benefits of auto scaling is that it is on demand and we can adjust the resources uh, in the to fit the demand curve in real time we do not uh, do not have to uh, worry about your compute capacity when the demand surges occur and it is fully automated and you don't need to do any manual operation and just you need to mention like we need to use this auto scaling option there are very uh, many modes which are available with the auto scaling we have the elastic scaling which releases the easiest instance with the when the demand increases and then elastic cell healing when whenever uh, the load balancer detects any of these instance created by this auto scaling is not healthy then that instance is removed and a new instance is added and there are multiple modes of uh, auto scaling we have the elastic scale in which we saw then we have this elastic scale out which adds the additional computing resource to the pool during the peak times and then we have this elastic uh, self healing uh, when an unhealthy ECS instance has been detected, it automatically replaces with a new one. So we have this cloud monitor as a tool which is available with auto scaling. This cloud monitor will provide a kind of uh, uh, an in uh, interface within the dashboard of the Alibaba cloud where it will say like uh, what is the CPU usage and how many ECS instances we have and what is the performance parameters of those instances and it will also show like whether we need to have more instances or we can reduce the number of instances those can be uh, managed using the tool of uh, cl cloud monitor 
And when for uh, auto scaling functions, we have the scheduled sc uh, scaling and the dynamic scaling. It supports the server load balancers automatic configuration and it supports uh, relational database access to the white list uh, auto configuration. The scheduled scaling, uh, we used to tell the auto scaling to perform a scaling operation at a specific time. For example, to scale up X instances at, uh, at 1 p.m. every day. Uh, or like we can say like dynamic scaling whenever the cpu usage or the network usage uh, scales up then we can increase the number of uh, instances but when the need is less then we can reduce the that particular usage as well so these are the various concepts like we have the auto scaling and then we have we have the scaling group we where we have multiple uh, scaling instances grouped together and then we have the scaling configuration and scaling rule scaling activities scaling trigger task and uh, cool down period so these are the various uh, scaling properties uh, auto scaling concepts which are available so the definite description i also i have given in this slide so you can just uh, read and understand this and the auto scaling usage we have to create a scaling group uh, and then we have to create a scaling configuration and enable the sc uh, scaling group and then we have to create a rule for the scaling and then we have to schedule the task like when that auto scaling has to function or we can set it like automatic scaling or anything this will be monitored using the tool of cloud monitor it has an api which will have a alarm role like when it, you have to be alerted so when we create the scaling group it will have the minimum and the maximum number of instances in the scaling group we have to select using the uh, server load balances and the uh, uh, relational data service uh, instances and then we need to have a configuration for the scaling and the uh, scaling group is enabled and uh, then we have a scaling rule which is created and then we create the schedule uh, schedule the task and this auto scaling is totally a free service all ecs instances that auto scaling automatically creates or manually adds to a scaling group will be charged according to the instance types so like only for creating that ecs instances alibaba cloud will charge you but for doing this auto scaling option, this product is, has been made free by Alibaba Cloud. So that you can, uh, if you are using this ECS instances for the uh, auto scaling, then you, are, you will be charged as well as, uh, as by the pay as you go instances, because you don't know when you need to have the increase and when you need to have the decrease. So we need better go with the pay as you go model. So when you when you want to avoid the fees you just need to release the instances next we are going to see about the optic storage service so this is normally used for storing the uh, files in the form of objects uh, like uh, we have the file storage in the traditional systems where we store the files in the folders and then we we store the files in the form of blocks and now we have the storage in the form of objects so when it comes to traditional storage, we keep storing the uh, files in the server itself. But when the volume of data rises rapidly, we need to have uh, more capacity. We need to evaluate the storage capacity, then go for a data backup, and then secure them using some kind of mechanisms, and then go for uh, cost control. So OSS is an encrypted uh, secure cloud so storage service which stores, processes, and accesses massive amounts of data from anywhere in the world. Uh, it actually can store massive volume up to the level of petabytes. It gives enterprise security. It has high availability. And the cost for using this OSS instances is uh, um, by using the pay-as-you-go model. So definitely the cost will go down. So the advantages of uh, object storage, it can store massive volume up to 50 per, uh, petabytes for a single bucket. You store the files in the form of buckets and the buckets can store up to 50 petabytes of data and you can have massive number of objects and uh, that increases the scalability. The simplicity aspect, it has the RESTful API accessible from anywhere and anytime in the world. Uh, flexible object size varying between uh, 0 to 48 uh, terabytes uh, flexible upload it has like normal multi-part and append and then we have the managed service and uh, monitoring metrics and access log for security we have 
multi layer protection and anti ddos multi user isolation and it provides comprehensive logs to help trace malicious access and in availability we have three replicas it has an availability of 99.999999 uh, percentage uh, data reliability and the service availability is 99.99 percentage and it has automatic service expansion and uh, automatic failover with the cross region replication so for the inclusiveness it has uh, various products like rich integration with other alibaba cloud services and it has the emr products and then max compute analytic db and dla and dbs snapshot and rds snapshot and docker image the even the kubernetes images also can be added into these buckets and the ram sts cloud monitors these are all the various products available when it comes to an object it contains these three parts it has the key data and metadata in a key it has a unique object name and data it has the user data and metadata it is a key value pair that expresses the object's attributes the data portion is opaque to oss the size of an object varies with the upload method a multi-part upload supports objects of up to 48.8 terabytes other upload methods only sub, uh, support objects of up to uh, 5 gigabytes so these buckets serve as containers like there is a, a new type of cloud uh, aspect which has been uh, developed nowadays we call it a serverless architecture when we don't have any server we call that aspect as a container so these buckets will serve as a container every object must be kept in that bucket that is a container the bucket name is globally unique in the object server storage service and uh, it cannot be changed there is no limit on the number of objects in the bucket an application uh, can have more than one bucket also uh, and the, and it organizes the oss namespace at the highest level and we pl it plays a role in access control and it serves as a unit of aggregation for usage reporting so here we can see like this is how the uh, url for the object looks like so this algorithm.jpg is a one image file which is uh, stored in the bucket so that is the object name key this one and the protocol here is what we call as the https protocol that is from the layer 7 so we take this https protocol and the bucket name is images hyphen bucket so this is the name of the bucket which we have given in the uh, oss instances and then the bucket endpoint is the access point from which websites access point is the oss hyphen ap hyphen southeast hyphen one dot ali uncs.com so it will look like this so this is the uh, url which we create based on the objects which we store in the uh, buckets so using this we can even do some kind of static websites as well so this object key can have a size of up to maximum 1024 bytes it is unique within the bucket and it includes the path prefixes and this uh, unique object key is uh, uh, it's quite unique for every uh, other object in the bucket so as i mentioned you can even host a static website for a very low cost and highly available solution and even you can uh, reliably serve your traffic and handle the unexpected peaks without worrying about your scaling your infrastructure or managing servers so you don't need to worry about when the traffic increases you don't need to worry whether you need to have any kind of uh, new server instances or not so here you see this uh, oss monitoring this monitoring your uh, site key metrics using a product which is called as a cloud monitor which i discussed earlier this cloud monitor dashboard displays both overall statistics and stats for individual buckets and that's all about the various uh, products avail uh, available with the uh, alibaba cloud and there is some other products as well relational data system that is almost the same as the normal databases but it has a capacity to have more amount of uh, uh, data storage now i would like to give you some information about the clouder certification link so firstly you need to create a, an account with alibaba dot uh, alibaba cloud dot com and then you have to check whether uh, your account is valid in edu dot alibaba dot com uh, 
so this is the in instruction i have given to create an account uh, uh, alibaba cloud using alibabacloud.com and then you have to sign in and go to the link uh, so this link which i have given in red uh, so this uh, link goes to a registration for uh, alibaba cloud uh, computing uh, the, the same certification which i shown you so they give free materials also to learn there will be a lot of uh, video lectures which goes up to uh, four or five uh, hours of lecture so you can take that lecture and then appear for that exam so you can have on uh, one attempt you can do that exam online as well same like you are uh, doing the uh, exam uh, or the same like you are doing the session now uh, so you can take a quiz of around uh, 60 questions if you are able to cross uh, uh, 60 points for that exam and then you will be awarded with the certification so in case if you are uh, getting this certification uh, from alibaba cloud uh, so you feel free to um, post that uh, certificate in your social media platforms like facebook or linkedin and even you can tag alibaba cloud and alibaba cloud academy and then even you, you can tag myself from linkedin or facebook uh, so then we will uh, take an opportunity to find you all in Alibaba Cloud's initiatives and we, Alibaba Cloud may uh, appreciate you as well. So this is the link for certification for Alibaba Cloud. So I will, uh, for those who at, uh, came for this session late, I will, I think uh, the moderator has, uh, so they have given like the certification link is not available it is not available unless you go on to the link which i shown in the powerpoint so you have to uh, you have to register using that uh, link which i shown in the powerpoint so this red link has to be followed and then you have to register for the exam so the exam is on the 3rd of june so try to be on time and uh, attend this exam uh, if, you, if you are not able to make this one then this exam cost like around 120 us dollars but if you take through this link it is almost free only the learning material will cost you just one dollar so that's not a big deal like you can easily get it less than 100 bucks in india is it's, it's worth enough to get this certification as well so that's all about my uh, talk on the introduction to Alibaba Cloud. So you you can have my social media information, like I have my Facebook page for In Speaks and my own YouTube channel where I post my lectures on data science and blockchain technology, and my research code uh, research paper codes are uploaded to GitHub, and you can connect to my LinkedIn profile as well. And if you have any questions uh, later after after this session you can uh, email to my uh, uh, official email code in at tni.ac.th in the second session we are going to see about uh, hadoop in alibaba cloud uh, firstly before going into hadoop we will see a brief introduction about big data and then we will see about an introduction to hadoop and then after that we will learn about the uh, hadoop architecture and then after that we will see in detail about the hadoop distributed file system and then finally we see about the various big data products available with alibaba cloud as i mentioned in the previous uh, session uh, that uh, alibaba cloud has a lot of uh, products not only just for cloud computing they have a lot of products for big data analytics and uh, even for deep learning and machine learning kind of thing so firstly we start about the uh, introduction to big data so what is big data so big data is a term uh, which is normally used to say about a collection of data set now, even before the advent of big data also we were using data but why do we call this as big data so the collection of data is so large and complex that it makes uh, difficult uh, to process using uh, database management tools or traditional data processing applications. Like for example, uh, you may process data using Microsoft Excel or even you have a huge data, then you go for uh, 
MySQL or even Oracle or some enterprise kind of database solutions. But nowadays, the magnitude of data is even growing more in leaps and bounds so that you cannot uh, manage with just the traditional database products. So in that case, uh, we call this kind of data as uh, big data. So in big data, we have uh, five properties. Normally, the first three Vs are used by the uh, developers uh, for developing a big data application, but there are totally five Vs in big data. The volume, variety, velocity, veracity, and value. Volume is the amount of uh, data. The processing of uh, data has been increasing with the huge data sets. That is the volume is increasing. And then in the variety, the data comes in all types of formats. You have different types of data. It can be a text, or it can be a numerical data, or it can be a, a flat file data. It can be images, it can be videos, or it can be hyperspectral images, and so many. Uh, recently, uh, when you, you might have heard of a news uh, that uh, uh, the, there, were, there was a computer scientist or a biologist, I don't know, she, it was, she, was a, uh, uh, she was a computer scientist and uh, uh, she captured the pictures of the black hole and uh, the whole image set of the black hole was stored in uh, an external hard disk. You cannot just uh, store it in computers. So she used multiple hard disks to store all the images which she captured from their black hole. So then you, you can imagine how much magnitude of images are needed and how much storage is needed. So that's why we need to have this kind of technologies like big data. Then we have the velocity. Uh, the data streams at an unprecedented speed and must be uh, dealt with a timely manner. So the, the faster velocity of data can be uh, managed in this way. And then we have the veracity uncertainty and the inconsistencies of the data and then value like the cost effective way to manage this kind of uh, big data nowadays to manage big data the tools which we use are mostly uh, free and open source so uh, it is quite cost effective like if you go with even this hadoop is a free and open source software and it's uh, uh, the framework is free and the softwares which you install in that distributed file system is also free so we will see those in detail in this uh, session. So what is the value of the big data? It determines the root causes of the failures, issues, and defects in real time itself. So you can have a fault tolerance system, and it generates coupons at the point of sale based on the customer's buying habits. So you can automate that system. A coupons in the sense, I don't know whether in the supermarket chains in India they do or not. Uh, here, I usually go to a supermarket called uh, Tesco, which is an UK brand. And uh, uh, I usually have my uh, club card or the membership card. So based on my buying behavior, they used to send me quite a, quite a cool offers. They give like a, a few hundred bucks of coupon for free for around like once in three months, they send like these coupons. And then they say like, okay, you have bought like uh, chicken and then fish and something like that. So if you buy this particular brand, uh, like a salmon uh, fillet or something like that, then we offer a discount, something like that. That kind of coupons are based on the behavior of buying um, during the past few months. So that is also uh, done by this big data. Also, it uh, recalculates the entire risk portfolios in minutes. Like uh, if you have a, a financial institutions or any other uh, organization having a huge investment, you need to form the risk analysis and you, you need to get the risk portfolios. Then that is also automatically done. So you can reduce that task. And then it is used to detect the fraudulent behavior before it affects your organization. Like the fraud uh, accounts are like the uh, fake uh, people who try to tarnish the database in your system. So that, that kind of security is also given. So that is the value. Like you need to safeguard all these things and you can see like these things are automatically done. So you can determine like how much of manpower is drastically reduced. Like when it comes to the current section of uh, 
job industry people always complain the jobs have been taken by migrants the job has been taken by this particular kind of people there is no one taking any of anyone's job but the jobs itself is decreasing because there is very less number of need when it comes to uh, something called as uh, automation like for example previously we need to have uh, some kind of testing uh, some support in the software industry but nowadays we uh, reduce the intake of those kind of people because we have automated system which can replace those people if you are able to do something which the machines cannot do automatically then you may get a job but if you are uh, doing the same thing which the machines can do so then it's like uh, you, you are out of the market something like that the machines can do then why should they hire you like if they hire a human then they need to make him work for like uh, eight hours a day and they have to give a salary but instead if they, they can find a machine which can do that uh, a task they can replace that human with a machine immediately and the machine will run 24 7 and that will not demand any salary or anything so that's the that's the uh, aspect of companies looking for manpower so that, now you can uh, imagine how the value of big data has been transforming the industry and how it is decreasing the number of uh, manpower needed and that's how uh, people are uh, having limited scope for jobs so you need to have the the students have to be taught in such a way that they need to have the skills which the machines cannot do the most important skill is a soft skill and also there are some other uh, technology oriented skills which the machines cannot do so those skills can actually help the students to uh, have a good scope now we go to the challenges with the big data the data has become one of the greatest sources of power in the 21st century uh, how to store large amounts of data how to process potential value for big data and how to process big data with reasonable cost and time so these are the major challenges we are facing now so uh, there is a area called data science i heard like uh, uh, from the principal of Loyola College, he wants to mention that they have a master's course in data science uh, in Loyola College. Uh, that, that's your mother organization. Uh, so they actually teach data science courses. And that data science area has been mentioned by uh, Forbes like around five, six years before they told that uh, data scientist is the sexiest job of the 21st century. It is not just a software developer. It is not just some business process outsourcing. It is not just some random IT job, but it has to deal with the programming. And also it, you need to have something with to deal with the uh, statistics and also you need to have business knowledge. So the, the, the person should be like a part-time programmer, part-time uh, statistician and the part-time businessman. And the data scientist must be a programmer who is much better than any other statistician. And uh, the, the data scientist must be a statistician much better than any other programmer. Then you can call yourself as a data scientist. And that's what I teach here. Like, uh, so they also even uh, came to tell that uh, data as the new oil, like whatever data you collect, it has a, a quite amount of value. Uh, so how to store that amount of uh, huge data which you acquire how to give them with the security how to process the value from the data how to get like uh, processed data and how to process big data with a reasonable cost and time and then you have a solution called the hadoop so now we uh, move from this uh, big data into hadoop so we saw about the big data and its properties. And from big data, we are moving towards Hadoop. So actually the development of Hadoop, uh, in, it has been developed for within the past two decades. Uh, in 2003 to 2004, Google published some uh, white papers on big data, namely Google file system in 2003 and MapReduce simplified the data processing and large clusters in 2004 so these are the primary 
publicly available uh, uh, papers from this there was a person named Doug, Doug Cutting and uh, uh, he created a Hadoop. He and uh, Mike Caffarella established a new sub-project of Apache Luzine and they combined with the Natch distributed file system and MapReduce and Doug Cutting named it as uh, Hadoop. So if you want to know who created Hadoop, it is Doug Cutting. In 2006, Hadoop saw a growth and uh, Yahoo uh, saw Hadoop's potential and invited to start, a develop, start a developing Hadoop technology. Uh, Apache Hadoop project is officially launched to uh, support the development of MapReduce and uh, HDFS, that is a Hadoop distributed file system. So since then, uh, Google uh, acquired Hadoop. Uh, when they acquired Yahoo and uh, later as well, they acquired Hadoop also. In narrow sense, Hadoop is an uh, Apache project, Apache top level project open source implementation of frameworks for reliable, scalable, distributed computing and data storage. It is a flexible and highly available architecture for large scale computing and data processing on a network of com commodity hardware. So it is uh, it is actually we call this Hadoop as an Apache product, but in a whole uh, subset, it, you, you can call this as an ecosystem which has many big data tools which can accommodate inside this Hadoop distributed file system and can be used for various uh, purposes. Then again, we can say that uh, the top level a project it is an open source implementation of frameworks so it is uh, even if you want to install hadoop in your computer it is uh, possible uh, you can do it by yourself and uh, there is no cost for any software because it's free and open source and the frameworks are for reliable scalable and distributed computing and data storage it is a flexible and highly available architecture for large scale computation and data processing on a network of commodity hardware so this apache hadoop can be uh, as an ecosystem can be found in this website hadoop.apache.org and the right side picture which shows like the ecosystem you have the the elephant is the ecosystem and then the parts are given uh, as the various uh, uh tools and the softwares which are available with the ecosystem of apache we have apache pig apache drill apache mahout and apache hue apache hive flume uh, uzi hbase spark apache spark has been uh, getting more familiar nowadays that is also a product of uh, hadoop ecosystem so all these uh, softwares are uh, been uh, embedded into the ecosystem of a Hadoop a distributed file system. The major features of Hadoop we are going to see. Firstly, it has a flexibility in data processing. It manages the data whether structured or unstructured, encoded or formatted, or any kind of data. Structured means it is even like a table, or unstructured means if it is like an XML format or a JSON format, or or it is like in the object format any kind of data it can be used for processing that kind of data so uh, that is a uh, what we call as uh, flexibility with the data processing and it is easily scalable it is an open source platform and it runs on industry standard hardware um, so it, it is actually uh, it increases the number of users who can pull into the data file system so that's why it increases the scalability of the system. That's why it is easily scalable and it is fault tolerant. In Hadoop, the data is stored in HDFS where the data automatically gets replicated at two other locations. So it is fault tolerant. So it can easily identify the fault or it can as, uh, isolate the nodes which are faulty and then it, you can uh, rectify them by adding new nodes and replacing the faulty nodes. So that's what we call as the uh, fault tolerance system of Hadoop. And then it is used for faster data processing 
Hadoop is extremely good at high vo volume batch processing uh, because of its ability to do parallel processing. So at, at one point of time, it can parallelly uh, monitor all the different data sources and it can uh, get the data processed in a more efficient way. And it is robust. Hadoop has a very robust ecosystem that is well suited to meet the analytical needs of developers and a small to large organization. So even if you are running a small organization or an enterprise setup of a huge uh, organization, then that case also you can use Hadoop. So it, Hadoop actually suits for uh, any organization having uh, to manage a huge amount of data. It, it doesn't depend like whether this is a small or a large organization. And it is cost effective. Hadoop generates the cost benefits by bringing massively parallel computing to uh, the commodity servers. So these are the major features of Hadoop we, are, uh, we have seen so far. And now we go into the uh, basic architecture of uh, Hadoop. Um, Hadoop has been developed in, uh, in two versions so far. The Hadoop 2.0 is the stable version which is available now. Actually, Hadoop uh, 3.0 uh, has been launched, um, but we are not explaining the, that architecture now because it is not like that stable as of now. But the most stable version is Hadoop 2.0 as of now. Um, we all started with the Hadoop 1.0, um, which has the Hadoop distributed file system as the base, which is which has the redundant and reliable storage. On top of it, we just had the MapReduce, which is used for cluster resource management and data processing. So these are the two layers which were available with the Hadoop 1.0. And when it comes to Hadoop 2.0, we had an intermediate layer. Like at the base, we had the HDFS, uh, that is the Hadoop distributed file system at the base as the storage. And then in the middleware, we had the YARN, which is used for cluster resource management. But in the previous Hadoop 1.0, MapReduce was responsible for that particular aspect as well. But in Hadoop 2.0, YARN has been separated from this MapReduce and it has been made as a middleware between the HDFS and the MapReduce. And in Hadoop 2.0, MapReduce has been used for data processing and other tools are also available for data processing. So the top layer is used for data processing and the middle one is the YARN, which is used for cluster resource management and the bottom layer is the HDFS, that is the uh, Hadoop distributed file system, which is used for redundant reliable storage. So for Hadoop 1.0 versions are like Hadoop 0.20, 1.x, 0.21.x, 0.22.x, and CDH3. And Hadoop 2.0 versions are Hadoop 0.23.x, 2.x, and CDH4. So these are the Hadoop 2 versions available. And then we have Hadoop 3, which has been recently developed. Now we are going to see about uh, uh, Hadoop 2.4 framework. So here we have the Hadoop common, which contains the libraries and utilities needed by other Hadoop modules. Uh, Hadoop distributed file system, which is at the base. Uh, it, is, it is a distributed file system that stores data on a commodity machines, providing very high aggregate bandwidth across the cluster. And then top of that, we have the Hadoop YAN, which is a resource management platform uh, to manage uh, uh, resources in clusters and using them for scheduling the user's applications. On top of that, we have Hadoop MapReduce. It is a programming module uh, for a large scale data processing. So this is the Hadoop ecosystem. So now we are going to see like uh, what are these useful for. So this can be categorized into three categories. Firstly, we have the basic softwares. The basic softwares are at the top layer, which we call as uh, the softwares which are supported in Hadoop. Uh, Apache Peak, Apache Hive. Uh, many people will normally, normally say like, uh, Hadoop and Hive. Hadoop and Hive are not different. Uh, Hive is actually a software uh, which is uh, available uh, as a basic software in Hadoop distributed file system. And then we have Apache Mahout and then Apache HBase, which is a database. And then we have 
Apache Phoenix. So these are the basic softwares which are available with the Hadoop ecosystem. Next, we have uh, the computing frameworks. These basic softwares are in top of these computing frameworks. And we have this uh, MapReduce, Apache Spark, Apache Flink, and Apache Spam, the Storm, which are available as a uh, uh, framework, which are available to host these basic softwares. So these are the computing frameworks which are available. And then in the bottom, we have data mining and analysis tools, which are Apache Flume, Apache Uzi, Apache Scoop, Zookeeper, Apache Kafka, and Apache Ambari. So these are the various tools uh, which are available for data mining and data analysis uh, with the uh, Hadoop distributed file system. And these file tools may not be connected with uh, the frameworks which are available but these can be used for data mining and analysis so there are uh, some core components in hdfs uh, the master nodes and the slave nodes the master node is a name node which connects to the data nodes in the slave nodes uh, so this uh, master node if, if it goes wrong then it can connect to the secondary name node and then connects to the data node so this master node is the major node which connects to the and data nodes and the slave nodes so you can connect as many number of uh, slave nodes to one name node and the master node is the actually the resource manager and the uh, slave node which has the data nodes are the node managers so they manages they manage the nodes which are present in that slave node next we are going to see about hadoop distributed file system uh, this is normally the icon which we use for Hadoop HDFS. So we are going to see about the introduction. Uh, so we need to have consider certain things uh, when you have to design the uh, HDFS. Uh, firstly, the hardware failure, and then we see about the streaming data access, large data sets, a simple coherency mode and uh, moving uh, computation is cheaper than moving the data and then portability access across heterogeneous hardware and uh, software platforms as i already mentioned in the cloud computing it is like the fault tolerant to identify the fault in real time and to rectify them in the proper way and then for uh, like a streaming data like a huge amount of data which has which is streaming they are like managed properly and then they are used for large data sets and then in, uh, in uh, you, they are used in these large data sets supports the coherency mode and uh, it is much cheaper uh, to uh, manage this kind of uh, big data when it comes to the hdfs and uh, they are portability across the heterogeneous hardware and software platforms are used now this is the architecture for hdfs or the hadoop distributed file system we have the clients who read the blocks within the data nodes. So we have the read access by the client uh, within the blocks in the data nodes and they have some have the read access and some have the write access and we just need to specify which node has which access. And the metadata is sent from the client to the name node and the name node will send to the block operating system and then the name node contains a meta node which has the name replicas and other aspects a name node is a master uh, server uh, that serves as the uh, files uh, that manages the file system namespace and regulates the access to files by the clients and these are connected to the data nodes and this data node usually one node per cluster which manage storage attached to the nodes that they run on so in block replication, we have the data nodes. We have many data nodes which are uh, stored in the uh, blocks. So we can replicate as many number, like you can see like one file, we can con convert it into one particular block and that can be replicated to as many number of times we want. And you can put them in any number of data nodes. Like for example, this uh, file uh, is converted into the block and it is stored in this data node one and then this data node 
and uh, so block number 2 is here here and three three nodes are having the file 2 and the file 3 has been in various other nodes so it just keeps replicating and you can store it in any number of uh, nodes now we are going to see about the alibaba cloud big data products so this is the product system overview of the uh, big data products available with alibaba cloud the top layer we call as the uh, data application service and in the uh, second layer we have the two blocks they are big data analytics tools and storage and database and they are actually hosted on top of apstara system and i have already told you in the previous uh, session that apstara system it uh, uh, it is on top of the linux cluster in data center this apstara center system has the uh, file system of pango and this pango will host the uh, different software tools and frameworks uh, which are used for big data analytics storage and database and the data application service so in big data and analytics we have the tools like dataworks pi this pi is actually an ai based framework which are which is available with the hadoop in alibaba and analytic uh, db is used for the ol olap and oltp operations max compute and stream computer are used for manipulate uh, managing huge amount of data so for managing big data and analytics we are using these tools next we are having storage and databases um, i have already explained about the object storage ser uh, service and then we have this relational data service table store and drds so they form an aspect of storage and databases when it comes to a huge amount of data and in the first layer we have the data application service which has some tools like quick bi data v and intelligent robot so these tools are used for data application service we have a lot of basic products for the cloud database firstly we see about uh, apsara db for a relational database system um, this apsara uh, db is stable reliable flexible and scalable online database services it is uh, its instant user interface is used for uh, various aspects of uh, visualizing the data and it is compatible with most of the relational database uh, systems like uh, mysql sql server and many others postgre also available and uh, but there is a limitation that it has very little support for oracle uh, it provides database online expansion backup rollback performance monitoring and analysis functions a read only instance and temporary instance are also available and the advantages uh, by hot standby second level switch service availability up to 99.95 the security protection anti ddos attack sql injection alarm data multiple backup and uh, it is easy to use with one touch data migration and visual management operation because all these tools can be managed by using a kind of a dashboard so you just need to manage that file system aspect and then you have to uh, make sure that the systems are available uh, with the required uh, um, criteria and because the service availability is up to 99.95 so it's quite robust and uh, it also gives uh, protection against uh, anti ddos attack like a distributed denial of service can be controlled and sql injection is the most uh, common uh, kind of attack on any uh, database services uh, systems uh, so that also can be uh, uh, controlled and data multiple backup can be done for increasing the security of data which is available so this is the aspect of apsara db for relational database system and then we see about the distributed relational database service uh, this distributed uh, data storage and re retrieval products based on rds uh, or, or relational database system uh, this rds or relational database uh, service is one particular product which is available with the uh, cloud computing aspect of uh, alibaba cloud like ecs rds is also another uh, aspect to solve the problem of this relational database service uh, 
uh, uh, RDS cannot support a, a business independently. It also reduces the difficulty of users using dis distributed databases. And what are the advantages of this uh, distributed relational database? It is easy to use when compared to a normal My MySQL or like uh, SQL. Uh, stability, it gives more stability by sharing Alibaba TDDL and uh, Corbab components. And uh, it is distributed. It can be distributed among any number of nodes. It can give horizontal split capacity up to a single node 100 times. And the scalability, it adds and drops the nodes, which has the little impact on application and efficient data man migration. So you can see like this distributed system, you can split up to any number of nodes. And scalability means it can increase the number of users who can pull into the database. So when it comes to big data, and the huge amount of users uh, clocking into the database. So you can easily efficiently manage by using this distributed relational database service or DRDS. So this is another product which is available with Alibaba Hadoop. And then this one is a stable store. Actually, when you see about the courses with the uh, Alibaba Big Data, we have uh, main aspects with the uh, uh, MapReduce, a uh, table uh, store, uh, Max Compute, and all those things. Uh, so building no SQL data uh, storage service on Alibaba Cloud Apsara distributed system is the aspect of table store. The storage and real-time access of massive uh, structured data. And also it is used uh, for uh, resource reservation in a flexible mode. And uh, the uh, monitoring display is given in real time using some kind of dashboard. So it is easy to manage. So table store. Um, manages a NoSQL means it can uh, manage the data which are not in the form of tables. So you can have like some kind of uh, some kind of uh, abstract data also. So the advantages of using this table store is that it gives a stability that is uh, automatic fault detection and recovery and the system availability of 99.9 .9, and it increases the security by increasing the user level data isolation access control and privilege management and also it provides a data redundancy backup like it periodically backs up the data so that in case if any kind of data breach is occurred so you can uh, roll back to the uh, previous point and so it has a large scale single table 100 terabytes of data storage high performance millisecond level single row read and write delay 100 thousand level of QPS. So in the basic products, the next tool we have is the analytic DB. It is normally used for uh, OLTP, um, massive data, real time, high concurrent on online analysis and cloud computing service. And it gives a free computation and query ability. It actually it is available and uh, it has a high availability and uh, it increases. It has an increased security. It is actually compatible with the MySQL protocol with along with the queries and the data models and all those things. And when it comes to the advantages, a high computational freedom is available with this and the flexible multi-dimensional analysis and data perspective and data filtering through SQL. So this is the high computational freedom which is available with the analytic DB. And also it gives like a quick response, like the response time is extreme in milliseconds for a 100 billion level data pivot, millisecond large data, uh, table data, uh, correlation and calculation. It is easy to use because it uses the standard SQL and it supports standard MySQL protocol and it built in data input. For this, I would like to give an example. Like uh, recently I participated in a data science hackathon where I was uh, given access to a hospital data set. So in that one, uh, initially they gave a very small data, which was having uh, patient uh, database records with around uh, 10,000 uh, uh, rows. So that was quite uh, okay for the Python's uh, Pandas library to read and uh, properly do it. But eventually they started give the uh, bigger data, like one data set was around having 100,000 data, then it increased to 1 million data, and then up to 10 million data. When we have the total 10 million data, that is like around uh, uh, many um, a few gigabytes. 
but for the normal traditional database uh, reading system it it will take a lot of time to first read the data and then processing of data is another story but when it comes to uh, th this kind of hadoop based system when we use this analytic db kind of uh, tools it is easy to read that huge amount of data set within a fraction of second rather than struggling with the traditional ones then we have the uh, next product of max compute this max compute is previously known as odps and it is used for large scale computing and storage up to petabyte level uh, multiple comp computational models are available sql mapreduce graph mpi iteration algorithm and other programming models are available uh, as uh, computational models and it is cost effective when it compares to other options and it has a strong data security so these are the features of uh, max compute and there are uh, some uh, advantages as well they are distributed. The distributed cluster architecture can be exp expanded flexibly as like how many nodes you want, you can add or you can reduce the nodes as much you want. And the security is an automatic storage of fault tolerant mechanism. All calculations are carried out in the sandbox. And then uh, it is easy to use, which has the which fully supports uh, SQL based data processing and provides the standard APIs, high concurrency and high throughput data upload and the download and it has a management and authorization of the nodes as well multi-user management uh, collaborative data analysis multi-user rights management and flexible data access control strategy the next tool is for uh, data integration it is a stable efficient and flexible data synchronization platform provided by alibaba cloud it provides an offline batch of uh, data across the channel for alibaba cloud computing engine so this is for uh, uh, integrating data from various data sources and uh, putting into one data uh, pool so this is for integrating purpose alone so it supports a variety of data sources it can be structured unstructured or like uh, numerical or image multimedia or any kind of data set can be supported or it can be integrated uh, complete data transmission mode and rich data processing plugins it is actually fast in an efficient way to, it can be called easily and strong transmission speed is uh, given and uh, it is actually good for robust transmission channel intelligent error detection automatic transmission recovery and it saves cost of dynamic allocation flexible expansion application of demand and payment by quantity so these are the advantages uh, uh, available with the data integration tool and the last tool which I would like to uh, explain is the Pi that is for Alibaba Cloud Machine Learning. This is available with the Big Data Analytics of Alibaba Hadoop. It is based on the uh, Max Compute and it has a GPU cluster. That is when you think about the deep learning, you, you may think like some people having some computer with one GPU. In case if you have a multiple GPUs chained in a one cluster and you provide that cluster to act on a huge data, then you need to have this kind of uh, uh, Pi, uh, Pi tool or Alibaba Cloud uh, Machine Learning. Uh, it supports uh, uh, machine reading, MPI, SQL, uh, Spark, and other calculation types. It has a built-in distribution algorithms of Alibaba. It supports tens of billions of data volume training. So you can have a lot of algorithms which are available within Alibaba cloud itself. So you can use them or even you can create your own algorithm and then you can manage this huge amount of data. It has a w web interface through drag and pull. So you don't need to write much code. You can just do like a drag and drop and you can get the uh, things done. Like if you have uh, got experience of working with rapid miner, then you will know like how this drag and pull works for the data mining and uh, uh, data analysis kind of things and the advantages it provides a one-stop platform service for data pre-processing to model evaluation significantly it reduces the threshold for data uh, big data algorithm modeling so already the algorithm is av available you need to have a platform which serve as the data pre-processing and then for creating the model and evaluating the model and significantly reducing the threshold a support for customized algorithms and components, a flexible 
and open personalization it greatly improves your modeling efficiency the data model which is created for the classification or clustering functions more efficiently when it supports the customized algorithms and components it provides a rich distributed algorithms to provide model accuracy and help customers explore business value from massive data so that's all about uh, hadoop in alibaba cloud and hadoop in general i have given uh, about uh, the alibaba cloud platform so these are the various tools i discussed uh, uh, discussed about the big data and analytics tool and uh, more than this uh, we have this uh, quick bi um, there is another tool which you might have heard of like uh, uh, power bi or even sap these are like uh, business intelligence tools which are available but in alibaba cloud platform of hadoop even we have quick bi tool which can be used for those kind of purpose and data virtualization using data v and then we have intelligent robot and so many other tools are available in the data application as well so then i explained about this uh, oss and table store and relational database service so these kind of aspects are available and uh, then i discussed uh, uh, discussed about this hadoop ecosystem so this is what we need to know about how what exactly hadoop is and how that ecosystem is managed and then how that uh, softwares are being used in the distributed file system and the products which are available in the hadoop uh, alibaba clouds big data so those things are all given uh, and then i uh, then we saw about various uh, tools which are available with the hadoop distributed file system so i again dis display the uh, channels of communicating with me so you can go through this any of these and the slides as i mentioned which is available uh, in the link which is provided in the chat box so if you have any questions regarding this uh, hadoop distributed file system you can post it in the uh, link which is provided in the chat uh, uh, you can provide it in the chat box and the link for the slides i display the front page uh, uh, again uh, so you can um have a uh, have the copy of my powerpoint slide which i give for this presentation um so if you have any questions you can post it on the chat box so this is the concept which are covered today are just the basics of hado and uh, more than this if you want to go into the industrial aspect you need to learn about each and every tool separately like like you need to go and learn about apache hive uh, separately and then mahout separately and like uh, apache pig apache zookeeper uzi scoop flume and all those things you have to separately read the documentations if you go to that uh, edu.alibaba cloud you will have uh, learning resources which are available as documentation so you can uh, read all those contents um, from the uh, from that particular uh, website like let me go into that edu it's an alibaba cloud.com so i will share that screen for you so this is how it looks like when you go into this alibaba cloud and in here we have this resources and support so in this resources and support we have this uh, uh, alibaba cloud uh, uh, white paper so you can get the white papers from here and then we have like uh, alibaba cloud academy so we have the training programs available here and then the solutions we have like various products for data security networking and all those things you can just select and then choose which one you want 
as for the solutions pricing is something in marketplace and then partners so you can even partner with alibaba cloud and then you can do a lot of things with this so they are opening a lot to collaborate so if you want to know about this uh, elastic com uh, compute service then you can just uh, click on this elastic compute service you can see uh, what are the aspects and what 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 you need to know it's all available here so this is the uh, documentation available for ecs so you can see like uh, what what kind of features they give and all the uh, history and uh, all the other information can also be obtained from this and similarly if you want to know about any other product you just need to go and search in the products like server load balancer so here so even you have some videos to explain about it and also you have like uh, uh, various scenarios why you need to have the server load balancer and all those things the challenges so those things you can read from these documentations as well so that's for some uh, advanced knowledge you can refer to this kind of uh, documentations so uh, that's all about my presentation today and there are even uh, some kind of video tutorials are also available like if you uh, go into that uh, cloud computing uh, learning resources i have uh, given uh, exam link so if you if you purchase that uh, a learning resource for a dollar you will get like a video lecture so in that video lecture there are a lot of tutorials like a live tutorials on how you have to create the ecs how you have to create the server load balancer and all those things there there is limited time that's the reason why i didn't include those tutorials but you can refer to those videos and uh, get more knowledge on how to like you can do a, like a hands on training to your students as well